Hello and welcome back to further testing of SSDs on the PS5. Now that everyone can take advantage of the M2 SSD slot on the PS5, now it's no longer in beta and everyone can take advantage of it, there is actually a huge array of SSDs open and available to, for people to choose between in upgrading their storage. Some of them prioritizing capacity with much, 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 much bigger drives. Some of them prioritizing performance with incredible sequential read and write speeds that the system may not be able to fully take advantage of right now, but in a year or two when developers take advantage of all the nicks and nacks and, tw and little, little quirks of the system, they're gonna be able to really push the system and the games and therefore these SSDs as hard as possible. Now, one brand that continues to be popping up constantly in the PS5 storage upgrade area is of course Sir Brent. Sir Brent have a range of PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, all of which I've tested previously on this PS5. And they've all arrived with different performance benchmarks. They've arrived with different load times in between them. In some cases, they've made the PS5 a little hotter, sometimes a little cooler. Sometimes we've heard the fans on this system kick up a little bit. And with all of these SSDs, they've all got their priorities. Now, at the top, you have got the Rocket 4 Plus. The Rocket 4 Plus is their premium SSD, available in up to 4 TB. This SSD, or well, currently at the time of recording, there's an 8 TB on the horizon. This SSD arrives with the performance benchmarks in excess of 7,000 megabytes per second. I think 7,100, even a pinch higher in terms of their read performance. Also, with a better IOPS rating as well and better write performance, this is definitely the premium SSD and is, of course, priced accordingly. It's by far the most expensive of the three PCIe Gen 4 SSDs on their lineup. Next up, we have got the PCIe this is known as the Rocket PCIe 4. It was their first kind of more formal release into the world of PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. This SSD, a little bit more affordable, it has to be said. It is available in up to, um, I believe, 2 TB. And this SSD, again, much, much more affordable per terabyte, but moreover, the performance is lesser with um, sequential read performance of between 5,500 uh, 5, and 5,500 megabytes per second there. So again, very much on the cusp and indeed in some cases lower than the recommended minimum of the PS5. And finally, we have got the super affordable one. We have got the Q4. Now the Q4 SSD arrives at a much, much, much lower price point, arriving up to 4 TB. Their 4TB drive is quite similar in price to the 2TB Sprint Rocket Plus. Double the capacity there for those that are prioritizing capacity. Uh, users that aren't really going to be storing PS5 games on this, but are looking at their larger collection of PS4 games and other applications and services as they get enabled. However, because this SSD utilizes something known as QLC, Quad Layer Cell NAND internally, the performance benchmarks are pretty poor by comparison, reaching heights at the largest capacity of 4,900 megabytes per second and going noticeably lower as you go into the lower capacities. This is a drive where its performance benchmarks are notably lower than a recommended minimum for this system. Nonetheless, we have tested this SSD and it has worked and loaded games within the PS5. And in today's video, we are looking at how these three SSDs fared in this system. We're gonna be putting on screen how they loaded a number of different games, and we're gonna see what the difference is. Is the most expensive one good enough to justify its purchase? Is it better, but notably better? They all loaded games pretty quickly, but what we wanna know is did this load the games quick enough to justify that high price tag, or are you better off going for the middle ground there moving forward? Now bear in mind, Later on, as developers take advantage of the hardware inside the PS5, games are going to get better, and therefore the demand and kind of impact of the drawing of data on these SSDs is only going to get heavier over time. So although these tests are valid now, a few years down the line, once you've owned your system for a while, it may be that these SSDs present a bottleneck down the line. So if you're gonna make this decision, you have gotta factor in how long you're gonna be using this SSD into the future, as what may not be a bottleneck today may slow down your games a few years from now. But for now, let's make our way into the comparison of these drives, go through how they look, and at the end, we'll go through the results. 
Right, so the first game is Borderlands 3. Before we go any further, it's worth highlighting once again that this isn't about the best SSD. That's almost certainly going to be the Rocket 4 Plus. It's about how much better it is, how it compares against the internal PS5 internal SSD, which I'm popping at the top left of the screen, and how much better it is from the Rocket Q4, the much more lower priced affordable option. So that is what we're looking at here. We know the Rocket 4 Plus should be the best, but even now looking at it there, Look how much slower the Rocket Q4 at the top right is loading the game. Yes, it's only about one to two, two and a half seconds at a push, but imagine that on a multiplayer game. Imagine that throughout the course of your game. And again, that bottleneck is going to ramp up with the fans getting louder and more. We can see Claptrap dancing across the screen, across all of these here, so we can see how they fare. Definitely the Rocket 4 Plus is loading quick, but is it going to be quicker than the internal SSD? I think it was in the original testing, um, but we'll have, again, I've done so many tests. Let's have a look. Yep, the Rocket 4 Plus was the fastest, and indeed the internal SSD was the third fastest there, with the Q4 obviously going slower than anywhere else. Now we're loading into the world of Pandora, repeating the test title screen into the game, all of them loading simultaneously to the very frame. If we go into them now, we can have a little look and, yep, that might even be a three-way tie. The Q4 is obviously the slowest, something you're going to hear quite a lot, but that might have been a three-way tie as we make our way into Jedi Fallen Order. So again, all of these, even the transition on the Rocket Q4 was behind, which is something we didn't see many times in our original testing there. So as we make our way in, this is the dullest screen here. Again, this is about... How quick does a Rocket 4 load? Is it faster than internal SSD? How much faster than the Q4? And in that case, it probably was the fastest, not by a vast amount, and the Q4 was less than a second behind it. Rays of Light, we've tested this on lots of SSDs. It's an indie title, but it's not a game I think I should really include anymore, but I'm going to include it for the last time in this set, in this comparison. All four loaded at exactly the same time. This game can't really take advantage of the high performance of these SSDs. So I think as long as they all load it the same, at least there's that benchmark for the less efficient title. Subnautica, slightly different story. Uh, with Subnautica in creative mode, I think I remember, at least I think this is one that we retested the internal SSD, but I think it was still faster than everyone else. But we'll have to see if that's still the case, because again, the retest of Subnautica on the console came after the original testing of the Sprint Rocket 4. So let's see. No, it's still an absolute country mile ahead of everyone else. Um, Subnautica, I'm not sure why and how it utilizes the assets, but it does seem to load quicker on the internal SSD. Although the Rocket 4 was a little way behind it there, not much. Uh, Oddworld Soulstorm, again, not a game that challenges the SSD. If there are differences, we've seen them, they are tenths of seconds, absolutely tiny. And in this case, I think if not all at the same time, then pretty darn close in between them. So again, although the Rocket 4, we're going to count the scores at the end. Again, we are looking at disparity between them as well. Hitman 3 loading into the Dartmoor area on a custom mission, so we don't have to deal with the um, opening cutscene uh, cinematic. Um, cinematic. We can carry on here, and again, Q4 is behind. I feel like the internal SSD and the Sabrent were largely identical there. We'll have to wait and see. I know I dicked around a bit on a few of these um, in terms of playing around with the camera and stuff. Um, but as we carry on into the next test, we can have a little look at Terminator Resistance. And with Terminator Resistance, we've included that cinematic, and I think this is one of the games where the glaring inconsistency um, became very apparent on the Q4. The internal SSD and the Rocket 4 running near enough identical, um, and the Q4 almost a second behind, um, which is something, again, we're getting quite used to. Yes, a number of you might be watching this going, oh, what's in a second? I don't mind, you know, save a few hundred pounds for a second. I get that, but at the same time, Think of multiplayer games, think of the running of the system, and bear in mind that the durability um, of the Q4, because that QLC SSD is much, much lower, and it will get a lot hotter, and the fans on your system will ramp up. So don't make all your decisions just based on the loading times on this video. This video is being made for a very specific reason, and it is not for you to walk away and go, nah, what's in a second? 
but for me the internal SSD and Sabrent once again absolutely tied to the bone can't really doubt them there so we'll carry on moving more the Q4 took forever to load that game as well that delay just got bigger and bigger No Man's Sky another game I believe the Q4 did particularly struggle they all still have the drop in frame rate here early doors that they all seemingly have that drop there um, I think this was another one of the times that No Man's Sky kind of dropped my character into thin air. Um, I can't remember if that was the case here or, or not. I have tested a lot of games and a lot of SSDs. But from what I can see there, no, no, they're all seemingly okay. Uh, the internal SSD and the Sabrent, look, uh, the Rocket 4 Plus, I should say, seem to be fine. The Q4 massively behind there. Um, and now into our second to last game, which is, of course, Red Dead Redemption 2. Again, massive game, 110 gigabytes, and already we're seeing difference there in loading time. I think the internal SSD is definitely ahead in loading this game. We noticed that before, it really does take advantage of the internal SSD in a way that it doesn't in all these other SSDs. And when we have loaded uh, Red Dead Redemption on two separate occasions in two different stock recordings, the internal SSD just outpaced everyone. So let's see how far behind it the rocket pcie 4 and these rocket 4 plus are behind and then the wait time for the q4 there just to see but we're in on the internal ssd rocket 4 less than a second rocket 4.0 uh less than a second more q4 still loading again this is a marked difference there so again that was what possibly six seconds maybe seven that's huge very very big difference between them as we go into our last game which is of course dead by daylight we're having a look here seeing how it loads in between all of them i know it looks like they're not loading at the same time all of them action that option at exactly the same time there are lots of different interspersed screens <clears throat> and that's how we're measuring the difference and you can see the q4 really struggling with introducing those kind of intermittent screens there in between with all the extra bits but the internal SSD followed by the Rocket 4, clear win there. What's inter interesting is the Rocket 4 Plus was ahead um, at the beginning there and then lost its lead. But for now, let's go through those results. Unsurprisingly, the internal SSD and the Rocket 4 Plus did remarkably well. Um, but again, we're not gauging these in a direct comparison because all of these drives either prioritize price, performance, both, or are just designed to you know find a middle ground as we can see with the Sprint Rocket 4 Plus Borderlands 3 load time it absolutely took it on the Rocket 4 Plus absolutely unquestionably the leader there um, when it came to loading the world it was a three-way tie um, on um, all but the Q4 so again they all got a point there and if we carry on into the next test we can see that the internal SSD and the Rocket 4 Plus, both of them loaded character um, asset in at the same time. So again, the Rocket PCIe 4, slightly behind, unsurprisingly. Rays of the Light, all four loading at the same time. This game is not designed to make the most of that internal storage there by any regard. So we can make our way forward again. We can see there that the internal SSD obviously were the fastest, but the Rocket 4 Plus was the next fastest to load into the game. And even the assets there, huge difference. Again, when it came to Oddworld, I'm going to call that a four-way tie. So at least the Q4 is going to get something along the way in terms of points. Uh, and then we move on to the next one. Again, internal SSD and the Rocket 4 Plus. Identical, my man. Identical. Loading there right down to the animation. Um, and if we make our way into our uh, fourth to last game, Terminator. Again, internal SSD, Rocket 4, neck and neck still. And again, we're starting to see that difference there become more and more apparent. Again, internal SSD, Rocket 4 Plus, absolutely the same. And the Q4 was, you know, a noticeable degree behind it. But the real disparity, of course, there was on Red Dead between them. Internal SSD had already loaded by almost a second before the Rocket 4 Plus. But still, nonetheless, the Rocket 4 Plus takes a point, at least against the other SSDs. And finally, on Dead by Daylight, a three-way tie on those different SSDs, the Rocket 4, the PCIe 4, and the internal SSD all together. And although we are looking at the points here on screen, again, the Rocket 4 did outpace the internal SSD on three 
different occasions for our tests. The reason I include the scores here is not to be damning in any way, but just because it's important to recognise that there's a reason the Rocket 4 is lower in price. It is because of that NAND being a, a lower quality QLC NAND. Um, and if you do go for it, it is going to work. But as you can see there, the pacing of it, you're going to be behind the internal SSD a lot. And although it wasn't by a large amount, and although at the moment that doesn't seem like much, later on in the system's life, whether it comes to multiplayer games or future um, games by publishers that are able to take advantage and game developers that are able to take advantage of the hardware on offer, that disparity can only get bigger. And that's something worth bearing in mind. So Brent Rocket 4 PCIe um, there, that one, the PCIe 4, did well enough, but still it was enough to be noticeable in terms of a difference compared with the more impressive faster SSD there, something to keep an eye on. But still, this has been uh, a breakdown and comparison of each of the Sabrent PCIe Gen 4 SSDs, and I hope this helped you decide not only on which SSD you should buy, given all four are still working on the PlayStation 5, even when it's out of beta and now in the full release, but I hope this helps you understand where those price differences live, and if you are going to prioritise capacity over performance, where you are going to be compromising in ways not just standard numbers on the end of, of, a, re, of a, spec, a spec sheet. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click like if you want to learn more about these comparisons as we look at different SSDs. And of course, network attached storage, data storage in general, everything to do with data, do click subscribe. All the products that I've talked about today, all of the SSDs and some recommended heat sinks, for your PS5 are linked in the description along with some guides to help you make the most of the storage on your PS5. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.